Okay, so let's start with the first example. Hair color of women on a high school tennis team. So, ano yung variable natin dito? So, yung variable natin is hair color ng women. So, particularly yung hair color. So, is it qualitative or quantitative? Okay, so siya ay qualitative kasi hindi naman natin binibilang yung hair color and siya ay classification. So, siya ay qualitative and what level of measurement? So, dalawa na lang yung pagpipilian natin which are nominal and ordinal. So, yung bang hair color may order ba siya? So, wala tayong order sa hair color. So, automatically, it's a nominal level of measurement. Next is the temperatures of 22 selected refrigerators. So, ano yung variable natin dito? Is it the 22 selected refrigerators or yung temperature? Of course, yung variable natin dito ay yung temperature. So, is it qualitative or quantitative? So, yung temperature, meron siyang number. So, siya ay quantitative. Now, we have to identify if it's discrete or continuous. So, again, kapag discrete, countable. Kapag continuous, we measure or measurable siya. So, yung temperature, do we count it or do we measure it? Okay, so, we are measuring temperature. So, that's why siya ay under quantitative continuous type of variable and while the level of measurement so we're going to choose between interval and rational lang since uh, quantitative type of variable yung given natin so again kapag interval ang um, level of measurement so zero has a value and kapag ratio zero has no value and itong temperature um, kapag sinabi natin na 0 degrees, so meron ba siyang uh, temperature or wala? So, meron pa rin. So, that's why it is under the interval level of measurement. Next, third example, the number of pages in your statistic, statistics book. So, we have with the number of pages. So, automatically, it's quantitative. So, yung number of pages based sa statistics book nyo, do we count it or do we measure it? So, binibilang natin yung pages. So, siya ay quantitative, discrete. And, um, if it's countable, so, um, kapag sinabi natin na there are no uh, number of pages sa statistics book mo. So, kapag naging zero yon, ibig sabihin wala talaga. So, is it interval or ratio? Okay, so it is a ratio level of measurement. Next, we have the ratings of a movie ranging from poor to good to excellent. So as you may notice, dito meron tayong um, order from poor to good to excellent. So, siya ay quali or quanti. Okay, so siya ay qualitative type of variable and since nabanggit ko na na meron siyang order, so siya ay ordinal. And lastly, we have the nationality. So, nationality, wala naman siyang number. So, siya ay qualitative type of variable and in what level of measurement. So, nationality, wala naman tayong order na sinusunod dyan. So, that's why it's a nominal level of measurement. Okay, let's now proceed with the different ways or forms to present data. We have textual form, tabular form, and graphical form. So, sa textual form, we make use of words, sentences, and paragraphs in a presentation. So, say for example, we have here the statement, In the statistics class of 40 students, 3 obtained the perfect score of 50, 16 students got a score of 40 and above, while only 3 got 19 and below. Generally, the students performed well in the test with 23 or 70% getting a passing score of 38 and above. So, like in this example given, the data is in paragraph form. So, ganito yung textual form. We also have tabular form. 
wherein it is defined as the systematic presentation of data in rows and columns and it is used when related numerical facts need to be classified in arrays. So, kapag tabular form, mas organized yung data natin kasi naka-table. And, um, if you're going to use um, table sa presentation natin, it should be simple and it should focus on the reader's attention on the data rather on the form and meanings and significance of information being presented should be clear. So, ito yung things to consider when you're going to use the tabular presentation of data. And we also have parts of a statistical table. So, we have here the heading which uh, shows table number, title, and the head note. We also have the box head. Ito, yung, re yung year, rural, urban, and combined. Wherein, it is a portion that contains the column heads which describes the data in each column. We also have here the stub. So, ito yung stub natin. It is the first column on the left of the table which describes the data on the given row. We also have the footnote wherein the statement, it is the statement inserted at the bottom of the table and we also have the data source or source note in which it is the exact citation of the source of the data which is usually included to acknowledge the origin of the data. So, these are the parts of um, statistical table. And before I forgot, we also have the table body. Okay. And the last um, way to present a data is through graphical form. It shows numerical values or relationships in pictorial form and it we make use of graphs symbols or visual aids and we have here things to consider if we're going to use graphical presentation of data it should be accurate or we should reflect on the highest degree of accuracy it should be simple basic design should be simple and straightforward it should be clear it should be easily read and understood and it should be attractive, holding a neat, dignified, and professional appearance, and should be stylish. Okay, we have different types of graphs. We have the line graph, bar graph, pie graph, or also called a circle graph, and the pictograph. Let's first have the line graph. It is used when the data covers a long period of time. Several series are compared, movements are to be emphasized, trends are to be established, and estimates are to be forecasted. So, we have here uh, examples of a line graph. So, this is usually used if we are going to show trends over a period of time. Next one, we have the bar graph. It is used when numerical values of an item over a period of time are compared and if it's cons and it is consists of regular bars which represents the quantity or frequency for each category so here's an example of bar graph so we bar graph could be presented as a vertical bar graph or horizontal bar graph so kapag vertical bar graph yung gagamitin natin make sure that the frequency is on the x axis and kapag naman um, horizontal bar graph, the frequency should be on the y-axis. Next and third type of graph is the pie graph or the circle graph. It is used to show the percentage or composition by parts of a whole. So, ito yung example natin ng pie graph. So, percentage yung madalas natin ginagamit dyan. And last but not the least, we have the pictograph or pictogram. It is used to immediately suggest the nature of data. 
So, sa pictograph, each symbol na ginagamit natin or picture, it represents a definite and uniform value. Like dito, sa first example natin, each picture is corresponds to five girls. So, um, if we're going to count how many girls are, are there in the fifth class, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So, times five, there are 30 girls. And like in this example, each symbol has, is equivalent to 1,000 people. Uh, according sa ano, population ng Middlebury. So, in the year 1941, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 na picture na ginamit. So, if we're going to multiply it by 1,000, since each picture corresponds to 1,000 people, so that would be uh, equal to 10,000. And um, that's it for the first part of this chapter. We thank you guys for listening and we hope that you learned.